Good day, FB20 friends. Today we're gonna be doing some oil change, but I decided to take off this tray just to take a look at if a previous issue that I thought was happening is still happening. Okay, so this is the driver's side, the front, and you can see that there's slight leaking. There's even like an oil drop right there. Granted, I uh, beat the crap out of this motor. Right? I just run it right into the 6200 RPMs like every other day, every day basically. So, you know, if, you're, if you have high revolutions, you have a high oil pressure and you have a uh, high load, you're gonna be pushing a lot of oil through your system. And if there's vibration, if there's like, it's gonna come like this, it's gonna become a little bit like this, a little bit like this. You know, this, this car doesn't eat a lot of oil, but you know, only when I take it into those high revs, I think it starts, um, you know, it starts complaining a little bit. And this is how it, how it complains. It weeps, it weeps oil. It cries tears of oil. Mm -hmm. Still dependable car. Doesn't eat oil like a lot of other people, but maybe, you know, knock on wood, touch my fingers, it, it won't, you know, leak too much. But I think with all, you know, flat engines, this is a, a pretty typical thing. Wanted to verify. So there it is. It, it does leak a little bit, but it's not burning oil. It's just leaking oil. So I want to be completely fair and, you know, not show any favor to either side but uh let's take a look at this side here there is you know less on the uh, passenger side here you know you can tell there's like a little bit of seepage but it's not it's not like blowing out so this side seems to be pretty good that side a little bit more leaky any flat engine is going to do this. EJ's, FB's, FA's, they're all going to do it. It's not turbo, it's not boosted, it's NA, but I, you know, again, I run it pretty hard. And so your mileage may vary. So y'all might be very well-versed mechanics. I myself am a novice, but you know, this is my third or fourth time changing the oil on this thing. Look, I'm going to try this thing, a box with the oil pan inside. We'll see if this actually helps with less spillage. Okay, so the uh, filter is off, oil is drained, draining nicely. It actually worked out pretty well because it, you know, got a lot of splash in here, so it kept the uh, ground from getting dirty. As far as watching a video about someone changing their oil, I don't know what could get any more boring, but hopefully this will be informative. I went to the super dealer uh, 5,000 miles ago to get like a crush washer and an oil filter. They sell these, you know, at all super dealers, like, you know together sometimes but then i was reading about some subaru people liking to use a mazda filter this is a subaru filter but it's made in japan and it has this part number here with ends in a, a three zero this is a little bit different than this uh, blue filter that you might see everywhere this one is created by tokyo roki and i don't want to say it's jdm but you know, supposedly the filter media is finer in this one than this one. You you can use this on like all any of the Subaru cars. I bought a three pack for BRZ, so I don't know. We'll see what the difference in uh, oil filtration is like between the two of these. What kind of oil am I using? Anything is fine. I had a uh, Pennzoil in here before. I'm gonna use some Castrol Edge 5W30. 5W30. Why? It's hot in Los Angeles. And this car comes with zero weight 20, but that's the spec that they give for like all of America. I know that uh, in global markets, they recommend a 5W30 for these FB20s. US, mostly for efficiency purposes. So zero weight 20 and cold weather. Here in LA, we don't get freezing ever, <laughs> unless you go up into the mountains. And um, mostly it's just driving hot, hot all the time. So 5W30, a little bit more of that uh, hot protection. Pew!